Last time I talked about the curios, we went over a lot of different stories. But since then, even more curios have been released. And because most of the stories are related to bigger stories within the Star Wars universe, I thought it would be fun to take a closer look at them in this video. Starting off with probably the most annoying curios to encounter in your runs, the Kaku Clocks. The Kaku Clocks come from a mysterious place called the Black Forest, where they are excavated and collected by people who are interested in them. The forest seems to have some sort of connection to Terminus the Finality, since a lot of prophecy and poet machines live there. After the IPC successfully took control over the entire Universal Market, the founder of the IPC, Louis Fleming, wanted to safeguard the IPC and its influence and presence across the galaxy. And even though the IPC was almost completely invincible in terms of manpower and financial strength, there was still one great threat they needed to prepare for. Terminus the Finality. So the IPC started Operation Cuckoo Clock, which entailed the creation of their very own cuckoo clocks based off of the clocks from the Black Forest that they had discovered due to a certain cuckoo clock fanatic. They used the clocks to gather information about the finality, while also using that same information to remove any probability of the IPC becoming bankrupt or disbanding in the future. The first of these clocks were fairly standard, with the exception of some custom-made ones, such as the Mechanical Cuckoo Clock. After the Second Mechanical Emperor War, the IPC was done dealing with the mechanical lifeforms, and wanted to commit a brutal extermination of all inorganic life. It was at that point that the IPC heard of Skrulem being selected by News the Erudition as a genius, so instead of extermination, they chose for diplomacy and gifted the mechanical cuckoo clock to Skrulem as a symbol of peace between organic and inorganic life. Soon after, planet Skrulem entered a second industrial revolution, and many new inventions were created, such as the perpetual motion cuckoo clock, a variation of the standard and mechanical clocks. Sadly, because of the nature of the cuckoo clocks being connected to the finality, the inventor of this device ended their own life for no apparent reason. Eventually, even stranger variations found their way to all the corners of the universe, such as the Divination Cuckoo Clock, which spits out pieces of paper with poems, composed of mathematical jargon. Many people have tried to decipher the poems, but every time someone comes close, the clock suddenly disappears, leaving the mathematicians to hope for its return one day. The Black Forest Cuckoo Clock was one of the clocks found inside the Black Forest itself where a master artisan was studying evil technology, which is concerning to say the least, when considering the connection between the finality and the cuckoo clocks. The fissured cuckoo clock was also found in the Black Forest by a nameless, who was determined to bring the clocks home with them after it caused chaos among some inorganic life forms. Unfortunately, the clocks had the unfortunate property of telling the future by splitting themselves into more of itself, eventually filling the Nameless's entire ship. Maybe the Nameless could have avoided being devoured by the swarm, had they the means to read the clocks. But the Black Forest is not just a place for uncanny or evil items. Inside the Black Forest, a sponge suddenly became self-aware. And even though it had some trouble communicating in the past, it has learned to smooth out all the things it didn't like about its own personality, becoming a truly smooth and slick sponge. Now it dedicates its time to helping other sponges developing their own self-awareness. The cuckoo clocks might not have been the best idea the IPC ever had, but honestly I can't fault the IPC for being overly cautious at this point. Right after the Border Star Trade War, and dealing with everything surrounding the mechanical lifeforms, finally an era of prosperity arrived, called the Glory Blood Era. However, after hundreds of Ember Eras, yet another war started, called the Interstellar Energy War, shattering the peace they thought was permanent. And so, the price of the peaceful era was paid. But let's go back to the Machine Empire era for now. Even for the mechanical lifeforms themselves, the tyranny of Emperor Rupert was hard to deal with. For example, the Organic Heart was created by Dr. Olsen, and shows how mechanical lifeforms think of organics. Dr. Olsen was subsequently resolved due to being too cognizant of the organic world. 
However, there are some planets that thrived under Rupert's rule. Vile Mechanical Satellite number 900 is part of the Charon Target System Alliance. They are extremely hostile towards all organic life. And of all their weapons of mass destruction, number 900 is the most terrible of them all. However, thanks to it looking so obviously mechanical, the main populace has disregarded it, since they have taken to disguising themselves as organic life forms. One day, inside the capital of the Machine Empire, the Mechanical City, the inorganic life forms faced a certain problem causing despair in both mechanical and organic life forms, which was most likely caused by Cora Pao's modified anti organic equation. It started with the Ash Heart Cyphertech, which started to question its own existence, followed by a mono horned beast, having its negative emotions being turned into positive ones. Then the Code Builder was affected by anxiety, and another, more arrogant organic life form was affected by the knowledge he was just average, even with his talents. Lastly, a certain brain in a jar could no longer distinguish if it was organic, inorganic, or a gaseous life form. But all of these problems were solved fairly quickly. Ashheart Cyphertech realized its own code was what made it exist. The mono horned beast learned to freely adjust its emotions. The arrogant organic life form became so incredibly average it could embark on the path of equilibrium. And the brain in a jar was fixed by Emperor Rupert himself. Even the Cognito Invalidator Code Builder discovered it could counter its anxiety by writing notes. These notes would be nothing more than a string of error codes, so eventually the Riddlers were drawn to it since it could potentially be useful to them. Speaking of the Riddlers, as followers of the Aeon of Enigmata mythos, they create items to assist them in obscuring the truth of the universe. One of those items being Mysterious Magnetism, a prismatic lens which creates a magnetic field that disturbs the senses. Kind of like how the illusory automaton assists the history fictionologists in their quest of destroying history. Unfortunately, the illusory automaton eventually discovered their own design by reading the classified texts of the fictionologists themselves. Which raises the question, could the history fictionologists be just another fabrication as well? Even the Riddler's words have some truth to them. According to them, whenever Mythos manifests, it will leave some sort of staircase in the void, with the dissolved reality of that place dripping down the stairs kind of like a jellyfish. There was a nameless who claimed that the jellyfish activates the grey matter regions of the brain, a place beyond understanding of mortals. But personally I don't think listening to someone who was affected by the Enigmata is a good idea. There are a couple of curios that have their stories a little bit more isolated than the others, which thankfully makes them a little bit easier to digest. Rationality's Fall tells of the destruction of a philosopher's union due to a civil war during the Mechanical Empire War. The leader of the union, Aurelius, was imprisoned by the Empire and forced to drink poison, but not before proclaiming to the mechanical lifeforms, thoughts do not fear death. Thoughts will never die. I, Aurelius, the Watcher in the Cage, the Foolish Shepherd, and the King of all Philosophers hail you all. You will celebrate your victory under the gaze of the Sacred Colonnade, and be endowed with true rationality. The rotting fruit of the alien tree is the exact same fruit as the normal fruit of the alien tree. But, well, rotten. A pair of Elixir Seeker twins each ate some of the fruits. One of them immediately transformed, while the other one instantly died. Unfortunately, since there was no one else present during this, we still don't know which twin survived or which fruit they consumed. A Ruan Pouch is a curio created by Ruan Mei, to be able to carry the entire universe in her pocket. But she was forced to seal the pouch after the pocket dimension within didn't stop expanding so it's now stored behind the display window. Truly a Ruan Mei moment if you ask me. The indecipherable box is a lot less volatile, as it predicts and manifests the items that you have in your mind. Herta rated it as one of the hardest curios to use, since she never managed to control her thoughts when she opened it. 
maybe this curio is simply not made for geniuses. Wish upon a star is simply a meteor, nothing more, nothing less. Unless you count the possibility of it truly granting wishes. There was a group of nomadic miners who traveled the universe searching for large quantities of aether to mine with their bare hands, which is extremely dangerous, especially for miners of large stature facing huge amounts of exploding gunpowder. But it seems like even the last survivor of the clan, who just so happens to be very small and burly, didn't escape completely unscathed. Rock and, stone! and lastly, after the Second Mechanical Emperor War, the IPC spent a considerable amount of credits to research Rupert II's remains, only to discover a terrifying revelation. Rupert II was an organic life form. And these were all of the curios of the entire simulated universe, except for the error codes of course, but I agree with Skrulem on the existence of the codes. Since the real universe is not perfect, the simulated universe should also have its flaws. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it, have a good one, bye!